Hello everyone, in this INR number 59, we are going to discuss about another important PYQ, which is Guillain-Barre syndrome, right? So what is Guillain-Barre syndrome? It is example of autoimmune disorder and they have most common variant, which is called as acute inflammatory demyelinating polyradiculoneuropathy, which is also called as AIDP because sometime examiner, they use these name instead of Guillain-Barre syndrome, right? So just remember, this is the most common variant of Guillain-Barre syndrome. I will discuss the four variants which is given in Harrison also. So let's focus on etiopathogenesis. What is etiology? Etiology is respiratory or GI infection. Remember, respiratory or GI infection usually by Campylobacter jejuni or even viruses are associated like a Zika virus, right? So these are two important things we have to remember. Respiratory or GI infection by Campylobacter or Zika virus. So as I said, these are autoimmune disorders. So what is the mechanism of autoimmunity? So mechanism of autoimmunity is molecular mimicry. So this is the pathogenesis. So remember what is molecular mimicry means if you look at the pathogenesis, as I said, pathogenesis is by infection, which infection Campylobacter or even by viruses, they infection, they will, uh, they will in, in stimulate B cells. B cells will form the antibody and antibodies. Remember antibodies are formed against infectious antigen. Remember again, I repeat, antibodies are formed against infectious antigen and infectious antigen molecular structure will be same as a myelin of the neuron. So myelin of the neuron and infectious antigen both have same molecular structure. You understand? So that is why antibody which has been formed, they will be causing damage of the antigen also that is good for our body but when they will be causing damage of the neuron that will cause Guillain-Barre syndrome you understand so this will cause Guillain-Barre syndrome because neuron has been damaged so this mechanism because both have same molecular structure molecules are mimicking each other this mechanism is called as molecular mimicry or cross reactivity so molecular mimicry is the mechanism of autoimmune disorder so what happens in this inflammatory cells which has been formed they are going to destroy or damage the Schwann cells, right? So they are damaging the Schwann cells means basically they are involving peripheral nervous system. Schwann cells are getting damaged and they are causing demyelination. So they will be causing demyelination, demyelination of which nerve fiber? So they will be involving motor, sensory and peripheral, all nerve will be involved. So they can involve all the cranial nerve from cranial number, number 3 to 12. So cranial number 3 to 12 all can be damaged by inflammatory cells in the Guillain-Barre syndrome, right? So this inflammation is causing damage of the Schwann cells involving cranial nerve number 3 to 12. And as I said, there are four subtypes. See, remember, this is the point mentioned. This table is given in Harrison at this page number. So now you, these are the four subtypes, acute inflammatory demyelinating polyradiculoneuropathy. This is the most common subtype, as I said and other two other three are acute motor axonal neuropathy aman and amson is acute motor sensory axonal neuropathy and fourth one is miller fisher syndrome so in this i just see in the entire table i will not read i will just tell you important points what examiner asked number one this is the most common variant seen in adults and antibodies are gm1 antibodies remember all all of them are having igg type of antibodies all of them are having igg type of antibodies right and in acute motor axonal neuropathy it will be children and anti g1 anti gd1 a antibodies are formed right in acute motor sensory and axonal neuropathy adults are affected and in miller fisher syndrome you will see anti gq1 b antibodies are formed right so these are the antibodies right so anti gm1 antibody is aidp Aman will be having GD1A antibody and Miller-Fisher syndrome will be having GQ1B antibody. So these are important antibodies we have to remember. Second thing, on electrodiagnosis, what will be finding? In AIDP, you will see demyelination. In Aman, you will see axonal. In Amsan also, you will see axonal. And in Miller-Fisher syndrome, you will see it can be involving axon also. It can be involving myelin also, right? So what are the features? What are the clinical findings? So because as I said that these are demyelinating syndrome, so they will be damaging the uh, peripheral nervous system also. They will be involving motor dysfunction, motor or sensory, all things will be damaged. So they will be having autonomic dysfunction, motor dysfunction and sensory dysfunction. So in autonomic dysfunction, they will have cardiac arrhythmias. 
and intestinal obstruction. So cardiac arrhythmias, intestinal dysfunction, these are the findings you will see in autonomic involvement. What will happen if there is a motor dysfunction? Motor involvement, they will be causing facial paralysis. They will be involving respiratory muscle weakness and respiratory failure. And there will be, if you check the deep tendon reflexes, they are reduced or absent. So deep tendon reflexes are reduced or absent. And the important finding, the you know characteristic feature of this Gillian Barre syndrome is the symmetric ascending muscle paralysis. This is the important point. So whenever you will see it is symmetric ascending nerve paralysis which will be going up and later on they will be involving the upper limb also. Right. So that is what we have to remember. Symmetrical ascending muscle paralysis will be there. Sensory involvement you will notice symmetrical peripheral nerve involvement or symmetrical peripheral neuropathy glove and stock like appearance or, or presentation will be present in them. Right. How you will give the diagnosis for diagnosis you will do CSF nerve conduction studies and Brighton criteria. So in CSF what you will find this is another important question albuminocytologic dissociation. So what is the meaning of albuminocytologic dissociation in this patient you will see protein level is high right they will be having high level of the protein and cell count WBC cell count should be normal cell count should be normal protein level should be more and that is the CSF finding that is why I said CSF whenever see uh, cells are made up of protein if cell is more protein will be more but here what is happening you are seeing protein is high but cell count is normal that is why we say this albuminocytological dissociation nerve conduction studies what you will find you will see that denervation and conduction block will be present Brighton criteria is used for Gillian Barre syndrome this table is for Brighton criteria where we are using a scale from 1 to 4 and these are the diagnostic criteria which we are seeing right so where we are seeing the flaccid weakness of the limbs tendon reflexes are decreased right monophysic course between the onset and then CSF cell count cell count will be less and protein count will be more right and then nerve conduction studies finding then absence of any alternative diagnosis for flaccid paralysis of weakness. So these are the various parameters which we are categorizing from 1, 2, 3, 4 and remember scale is 1 to 4 and 1 is being the most certain. So when you find number 1 that means it is certainly a diagnosis of Gillian Barre syndrome. Right. So this is Brighton criteria we are using and treatment what we can do. See in this patient treatment is mostly IV immunoglobulin and plasma pheresis and you can give physical therapy like a respiratory support until this patient recovers right and almost all patients they survive majority recover within week or months remember as i said in the motor weakness the flaccid paralysis respiratory muscle weakness so this is what we have to support till the patient recover because this is the this is the pro problem for the patient which can be fatal also because of respiratory muscle weakness and failure he may die also right so cardiac arrhythmia all these things we have to keep in mind when we are managing these patients right so this is important uh, point so please remember diagnosis csf albuminocytologic dissociation and brighton criteria is important and treatment is iv immunoglobulin and plasma pheresis so keep revising this topic for your upcoming exam best wishes for your exams